Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Talking Halos. I'm your host today, Jared Timms, and I'm joined alongside my co-host, my partner in crime, Nate Green. Nate, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Jared. How about fantastic. you? I got a little something here for you. Can bring this out here? Oh. I know it was only two games, but uh, you got to bring out the broom. Got to bring it out for all the, all the fans out there. But uh, but yeah, you know, um, I mean, just get kind of right into it, I guess. And, uh, and you know. Angel swept, big yes. uh, big series sweep. Get back to five hundred, um, three and three. I know it was two big two wins. I don't call them big wins. We're early in the season, but two <laughs> wins. Um, every win matters, even though it definitely felt like they were trying to lose game two. Um, <laughs> yes. um, and, and we'll get to that. We'll get to that shortly. Um, but first, before we get going any further, any further at all, I have to mention the name about five or six times. So blue wire, blue wire, blue wire, blue wire, blue wire. And if you don't understand that, um, that is who uh, broadcasts our podcast here at Talking Halos. It's Blue Wire. Uh, go check them out if you're looking to start any type of podcast. If Blue Wire, if you're listening or watching this, would gladly take some Blue Wire shirts to wear, um, we'll gladly do that. Just like we got this guy right here, a little Go Halos yes. action. Fantastic. want to thank the Angels um, for hooking it up for us here um, at Talking Halos, giving us a sweet it was fantastic. You guys didn't see it already. Um, yeah, tip the cap to the Angels. Uh, I'm not gonna. I won't throw it out any names, but uh, just thank you uh, to the Anaheim Angels for for hooking up all the uh, all the podcasts, especially that was uh, that was really cool of them. And hopefully, hopefully we can do it again very soon and come together as a uh, as a fan base. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. So as always, guys, I just want to say uh, thank you so much for you know, supporting this podcast, uh, listening and watching us here at Talking Halos. It's been fantastic. It's going to be fantastic. going to be a good season, even if uh, Nate is correct with uh, what he has, you know, his, his predictions correct. It's still going to be a fantastic season. We had a lot of fantastic episodes coming along the way, even though I feel like we're going to be talking about the same thing a lot. Um, if this yeah. series has any indication as to what this season is going to look like, we will be talking a lot about some certain things and, and you'll, you'll pick up right away what we're going to be talking about. Um, but of course, guys, you go, go subscribe wherever you're listening or watching, hit that bell if you're on, on YouTube. So you can know when new podcasts are dropping on there. You can follow myself on Twitter, Jared underscore Tim's. You can follow Nate, Nate Green 34. And guys, we have so much in the work too with social media. I'm, I'm excited. I'm super excited for that side of things as well. So, Nate, let's get it going here. Yes. Big, big series win. I'm just gonna call. I'm gonna call any win probably a big series win, um, just because wins come at a premium to the Angels. It feels like uh, not every. It just feels like every win is just so eventful. Um, you know, you can look at Game One. We were there for that one. Fan, yep. pretty good game. Uh, you know, you saw Joe Adele break out of his slump. And in fact, I think we were mentioning it before the home run that he hit. Yep. Um, actually, on the podcast before that, if he yep. takes that opposite field approach. And if he stays he right center, good things will happen. Right and center, he stayed right happen. center. Yes, he did that on that pitch. Uh, hit the double as well, went to the big part of the park. Um, you just kind of saw it coming. You know, you saw him chasing uh, in the Astros series, a lot of sliders away. Um, I think good scouting report. Like we mentioned that before. I think the Astros are just, you know, very good with the scouting reports uh, side of things. And, you know, I think that's, uh, that had a lot to do with why Joe Adele suffered. You know, we get to the Marlins series and Joe Adele, you know, he played pretty well. Hit the ball hard. I know he had a couple strikeouts, but he hit the ball hard. Um, of course, he hit the home run. And uh, the double, you know, of course. Yeah, and double, big double, of course. But, um, but yeah, you know, and we won't even, we're not going to talk about the defensive side of things yet. We'll, we'll get there. I know he made the big error in game two that almost cost them. Um, but yeah, you know, Brandon Marsh came up in, in game one as well. Just felt like a, a good quality when you saw it. It was exactly what the Angels. Like you were hoping for out of the Angels, you got six from Lorenzen, so you're hoping from six from a starter, and then you go seven, eight, nine in loop to Para, whichever way you want to go on those two guys, mm -hmm. and then Iglesias in the ninth. Uh, Nate, I'll use the term. Yes, it's a closer. Pitched in the ninth, got the save. That's what a closer does. He did not get the save, unfortunately. No, he but... tried to get the save though. No, he did that. not. <laughs> nah, he didn't. Uh, I could have gotten the save though. Uh, actually, we thought he should have sat. They should have sat him down. Um, uh, I, once you get that, like. After three runs, once you get that fourth run in that inning, um, the to not make it a save situation, you basically have to start warming somebody up. It felt like because uh, it was an automatic, he was going to give up a run. It, automatic. Yeah, always, always. And if you haven't listened to this podcast before, um, 
we have a very good feel on Rysel Iglesias, probably a better feel than Joe Madden sometimes. Um, and it's not even like a feeling thing. It's a knowing from past experience that Rysel Iglesias doesn't do well in any games that are not a safe situation. You don't even have to know. He tells you. Yeah, no, he'll tell you. interviews where he says, I only pitch good in save opportunities. Save opportunities or tie games. I'll give him tie games because I think he pitches. He He doesn't like game two. He doesn't like pitching in tied games on the road. He will pitch in tied games at home. He does not like pitching in tied games on the road. Don't ask me why. That's what he says. It's like saying I like ketchup but not uh, tomatoes, right? I guess, which a lot of people will say that. So, I mean, it happens. Happens, happens. Um, yeah, good good first win, I thought. I thought that was – I thought the first game in my, or against Miami was a, was a good win. Uh, but we get to game two, and it just – yeah. Yeah, it was, it was good, Nate. I don't, I don't know. I don't think you watched it as much. But, uh, but we saw the Angels, I think, take an early – oh, no, they, they were down one nothing early. Yep. Um, came back, this tied it up. Joe Adele error. Yep, Joe Adele error. I know it's one of those things. It's um, – Go ahead, try. I have no. I can't defend it. I can't. That's that's a tough one to defend. It really is. Just yeah, honestly, like this is one of those. This is one of those times where that play sped up in his head a hundred percent. It was like I'm going to third. I'm going to third. I need to go to third. I need. I didn't get the ball though. It seems like a lot of things speed up on him defensively. Yes. Yep. That's why that's he throws exactly. the ball into the first base dugout, and that's why he misses ground balls. Oh no, definitely, and I, I agree with you. I think that things speed up. I think that that's a maturity thing. I think things will slow down for him eventually as he continues to play. Um, which is why I don't understand why Joe Madden is taking him out of games yeah, or Jose Ross. It doesn't make sense. I mean, uh, you got rid of Justin Upton. The goal was to let the kids play, and you're not letting him play right now. And I know he's, he's scuffling a little bit um, defensively. Like, I understand if it was the ninth inning and the Angels had the lead, and it's like, hey, let's go put somebody who's going to be a better defender out there. Jose Rojas is not a better defender than Joe Adele. No. As odd as that sounds, and I'm not even a Joe Adele defender. Um, but Jose Rojas, he, he's good. But, like, he's not an elite defender. Like, it's not like we're, you know, putting an Andrew Velasquez at, at shortstop where, like, he's considered a very good defender. Um, it, it just – just let him play. Like, if if he struggles, he struggles. But, like, for the Angels to be successful this year, he has to be successful. Mm-hmm. We, so, we, we mentioned it. The two keys to success are, are Joe Adele and Noah Syndergaard, we think. I mean, I mean, everything is a key to success, mm-hmm. I think, on this team. Like, you need to have good seasons from a lot of people. But those two in particular, if those two have good seasons, I think everybody else kind of follows in a sense. For the uh, most part. Yeah. So, I, that's where I'm at. Um, I don't – I don't understand why Joe Adele isn't playing more games. You know, it's a let the kids play type of thing. You know, we're going to, I think we're going to say that all year. It's going to be kind of one of those trending things where we're going to see, you know, I, we're probably going to see the same thing a lot down the road for some strange reason. Um, and I, I'm not a huge fan of it. It is what it is though. It is what it is. We don't want to complain that much here um, on this podcast because the angels, like I said, swept their three and three back at 500. We don't want to complain. Um, Let's move down down the road a little bit farther. Anthony Rendon looks fantastic at third base. He made the air. Um, covering ground, though, I'm not too worried about that. He's making the regular play. He's he looks fine. He looks, his, uh, he looks as cool as the uh, backside of the pillow. Um, like he, he is, he's as cool as can be. Hits the home run. Uh, let's make it a 3-1, 3-1 game. Uh, that was huge. We saw the uh, cowboy hat, which I think is something else. Uh, we might need to get some cowboy hats at some point mm-hmm. and wear them on here. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm I like down. it. I like mm-hmm. it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you know, you saw three, one win. Um, this is where things I, we don't like, and we can already tell there are a lot of team, a lot of people that didn't like this. You paid how much? 96,000, $96,000,000 this off season on the bullpen to sure up the seventh, eighth and ninth. Right. So you get, uh, you get four innings out of, out of your starter today and Patrick Sandoval, who looked okay. Didn't look great. Didn't look bad though. Um, had 13 swings and misses, something like that. I think he had he the uh, ball well. I mean, check, yeah, he, he threw the ball. Well. He had six Ks, three walks. The three walks, you know, is going to be the big thing that I'm going to keep an eye on. Obviously, he walks in one inning. So, yeah, yeah. him and Suarez, like the biggest keys to them pitching well are the walks. You know, if they if they're not walking guys, they're going to be tough to hit. Mm-hmm. If they're walking guys, then they're going to have rough outings. Um, so no, I, I thought he threw the ball well and yes, he's coming off some shoulder fatigue. So they they, they were a little bit more cautious with him pitch count wise, but I think if he was hundred percent, he gets through five, probably even gets through six because he was at 70 through four. I think he probably gets through 85 pitches and five. 
yeah. and calls it a day, shake his hand, great job, and we can move on. But yeah, that that was kind of the the worst part about the day was he. You could tell the the pitch count was a little lower than we would have liked. Yeah, and he gets the seventy pitches. I think I think uh, we were talking on the phone, we were talking about it on the phone, and he you know you saw seventy pitches, and it was like, well, if he gets to hundred, he gets six six innings probably out of the way there through a hundred pitches. And that's where you want to be. And you know, you, you probably take a, hopefully you take a three, one lead into the seventh inning. You bring in, uh, you still bring in this, you're still bringing in the same guy. If it's still bringing in those same guys that you, that you well, spent all the money on. Um, unfortunately not, we didn't see it this year, this, this today, tonight, though. not yeah. tonight. No, no we did not. not tonight we're though. Just... I'll, I'll say this. I do like Ollie Ortega or um, Austin Warren in that like inning eating role in that. Like if you, you know, you do have to throw a guy out there for four innings or something like that. I like both. I do like both those guys. If Ollie Ortega is throwing strikes, I like it. If he's out, if he, if he walks the first guy, it's like, all right, let's get the bullpen going, please. I uh, would have rather seen Austin Warren pitch yeah. in the seventh. I would have rather seen Archie Bradley, who we spent money on pitch in the seventh. I would have rather seen uh, yes. Aaron Loop come back and pitch in the seventh. Well, it really doesn't matter to me. And you can say left, right, whatever. We even talked about this yesterday. The reverse splits with Loop is unbelievable. He he gets righties and lefties out anyway. So if you're going to pay all this money for the bullpen, you use it correctly. And this has been our biggest gripe about Joe Madden. He does not use the bullpen correctly. In a two-run yeah. game, nonetheless. Like if it was like a three, four, five-run game, something like that, or if the Angels were losing – Go to whatever you want. That's fine. You know, let like, let Myers throw. But like in game he, one, you could have yeah. gone to Myers in the ninth inning, and it would have been perfect. You know, Easy. Myers perfect was warming opportunity. up. Yeah, perfect opportunity. You know, give him give him an inning. You're up five. He like, gives up a couple. He gives up a run or two. You get Iglesias to back it up. You know. Yes, exactly. But instead, yeah. it's like no, we got to put him in a tied game and or put him in up two. He blows the lead, and now it's tied. And now the Angels are scrambling with their bullpen, trying to figure out how we're going to win this thing. Um, after we've used Tapera's probably unavailable, honestly. He probably was not available after throwing again. That's probably the th- – is that the third time he's thrown this season? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think However, he, he didn't unavailable. pitch the game – he didn't pitch the day before. That's my only thing well, with that. No, like, he threw Monday. Mm-mm. We no. were there Monday. He no, 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 Monday. no, the game before that. It was okay. like he was pitching three days in a row yeah, or anything like that, you know. But he probably was unavailable. So I understand with him not being available, but I still would have rather seen Warren in the seventh and, you know, a loop in the eighth or loop in the seventh, Warren in the eighth, whatever. I, I trust Warren way more in the seventh or eighth than I do Mike Myers right now, personally. Yeah, I don't know. But like, like I said, back, back to the Ollie Ortega, Austin Warren type of thing, like you get four innings out of your starter, those guys, like you paid even Archie Bradley coming in in the fifth there, I would not have been upset about, you know, or the sixth. But again, you paid three guys a lot of money to get you through that seventh, eighth, and ninth inning, and instead you throw Mike Myers out there who gives up the game tying home run, and then you go to bring him in Jimmy Herget. Like this was our biggest gripe this it's, entire it's time. Sketchy. It's it's. I'm fine with Jimmy. I like Jimmy Herget. I I throw the ball well. I, mean, I it's like. It's really him. hard to be upset with him right now. He's exactly. throwing the ball well. Exactly. I like him. I don't like him in a tie game against any team. It's like Steve Ciszek. Him... He's literally Steve Ciszek. Where yeah. like all the fans last year were pissed off when Steve Ciszek comes in in a one run game in the seventh or eighth. But yeah. like that was the best we had. We didn't spend ninety six million dollars on relief pitching. Now we did, and it's go use Archie Bradley, go use Aaron Loop, go use Austin Warren, who's been really good as an Angel so far. You have a um, damn good bullpen. Yeah, you, you do. You and do. as long if as you use correctly. him in the correct roles, Mike Myers is not a seventh or eighth inning guy mm-hmm. in a close game. He's the guy who throws the sixth inning or the seventh, eighth up by five or six runs, maybe okay. even the ninth. But like, that's not a guy you want in the seventh, eighth inning of a tight game late. If that is the guy we were going to in a playoff game, if you know your 95 wins is correct, then they are a playoff team. And it's the seventh inning and they're playing the Houston Astros. They cannot go to Mike Myers in the seventh inning. No. Unacceptable. No, you, you can't. You can't win games that way. It, it, Mike Myers, and I'm not saying this just because of tonight, Mike Myers is almost not on a postseason roster when you look at it. You're bringing somebody – you're bringing what Michael Lorenzen in from or somebody like that. You, Reed Jimmy Detmers is going Jimmy into the Lorenzen bullpen. into the pen. Something like Hoffman that. can make the roster, I guess, instead of – you know, like yeah. Bachman's throwing the ball well at that point. He could get a call and make the roster. So, yeah, like, it is very possible he doesn't make the roster. Uh, I think every year we have him as a question mark to even 
be offered a contract, you know, get non-tendered or not. So I could easily see him not making the roster. But, yeah, I do think that was a big mistake. Um, The Angels had to win the game twice, and you never, ever want to do that as a team. You never want to have to win a game twice because usually when you're trying to win a game twice, you end up blowing it the second time. So, no. Well, you, you mentioned the perfect word for it, team. Um, you know, the, the bullpen gave it up and the, then the offense came and it was like, you know what? Hey, we got to do a job. And that's what they did. Ty, um, who, uh, Jack Mayfield um, got walked. on base, walked in the ninth. You bring in, uh, you bring in Tyler Wade, Tyler Tyler Wade. pinch runner, stolen base. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was something I wanted to bring up too. Tyler Wade brings that dimension to this team. Does. We would not have had, we don't win this game last year because we yes. don't have a Tyler Wade that we can go to off the bench. That was like, boom. They can know what pitch you're going on, and they're still not going to catch you, Tyler. Like, just just pick a good one out, take second, bunt you over to third, or we'll try and get a hit, whatever. And, and the Marlins even gave them the game, you know, wild pitch, and then, you know, the fielder's choice, fielder's choice game winner is what they called it, I know. But uh, you could have called it an error, I guess. But, yeah, Angels win because Tyler Wade changes the game deep, uh, with his speed. What, uh, totally different team than last year. This team – is playing in the 10th inning and hoping that the bullpen that they already screwed things up and brought in Iglesias, you're either asking Iglesias to get six outs or you're going to run, you know, Archie Bradley out there who possibly gives up a run. And now we're looking at a two and four start instead of a three and three start. So really, really impressed to see Tyler Wade in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, I thought Joe Madden in general has managed the, the team well in a sense like like late in the game bringing certain people in you know like I like Jared Walsh coming off the bench tonight against the righty um I I like uh I wasn't a huge fan of taking out Joe Adele I think he's done it twice now but but so be it you know if you have a hotter bat which I don't think Jose Rojas is right now but if you have a hotter bat that's hitting a little bit better you know if you have Danny Duffy or or you know you have an Anthony Rendon who's got the night off you have a Mike Trout that has a night off um yeah throw, throw him in for Joe Adele that's fine you know, or if you or if you have to, you're facing a righty, you bring in Brandon Marsh or something that's coming off the bench. Fine, that's cool with me. Do, do that, but you know, I, I thought Joe Madden has done a perfectly fine job with managing games yep. late. I just thought I I think and I think we're all in agreement here that he just hasn't done a good job with the bullpen, unfortunately. And I don't know if it's experimenting. I don't know if it, I don't. I mean, and we can't even blame Joe Madden because we don't even know if it's Joe Madden. It could be Perry sure. for all we know. Um, and but don't even writing know if on it's experimenting, like exactly, it could be like, hey, we've got a bunch of guys that we're trying to figure out what role suits them best. Mm-hmm. We had Myers pitch late in the game last year. He had an okay, you know, he pitched bad early, pitched better yeah. late. Maybe we give him a shot to pitch in this late inning role, and okay, we we decided he can't pitch in the late inning role. Let's move on. Yeah. So it, it could be something like that, and it's not really Joe Madden's fault. So I'm not going to blame Joe Madden here, but I I do want to see almost the uh, money ball quote any but anyone but Myers in the seventh inning <laughs> it, it 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 should be that way like I don't care and honestly like and I, I don't care that <laughs> you're going to him in this situation because he's been in that role before he's got the experience but you paid how like this is my whole thing that's why they you paid how much money to, to close this out years. exactly you paid how much money to close this game out and you didn't go to the right guy. I don't care if they're not available. They need to be available. We're early in the season. Archie was available. Hundred percent. Archie Bradley was available. Right. Aaron Loop was probably available. Right. Tapera was probably the one who wasn't available, but Aaron Loop was probably available. Archie Bradley, a hundred percent, was available. Austin Warren was available. Regardless, r- regardless, regardless, regardless. Again, I know I don't want to get into complaining too much because the Angels no, well, did take two. Of, they did uh, take both of them. Um, but again. They they almost lost this second game. We could be in a completely different conversation here right now, like we've mentioned before. So, mm-hmm. um, one other question I got to ask here. Yep. Uh, I don't know. Did you see the Tyler Wade play? The one where he was slid in the second and they said he was out and then safe? Yeah. Was he out? Was he safe? Here's my thought on it. And I, and I, I just want to give my thought because this is, I think, is correct. And I thought that MLB made the right call in calling him safe. Um, it wasn't because they didn't have enough evidence i thought it was because jazz lifted his foot i don't know if you saw that at the end i i did slow motion and in fact hey, do you want me to try to share my screen i have it up i, I have it up right now as All well right. so i don't know doing? i i just i just think you know you look at the angle that i posted on on twitter and um, i'm gonna 
you know, shamelessly throw it out there. If you don't follow me on Twitter, Jared underscore Timms, um, I, I, um, you, you look at that and right at the end, you just see jazz kind of lift the foot up and it's like, what are you doing? Like he's trying to, you know, get the foot up there. Keep, keep the foot off. I, I, that, that was my thought. I'm fine with blocking the base. You know, I thought he did a good job of that. It was just when he, when jazz is bringing the foot back up, um, the, uh, Wade's foot comes up with it and he tags him and it's like, I don't know, man. I don't know about that. So I, don't, I, I think it was, yeah, I, I think I would call him safe there as well. I think yeah. it was tough. The fingertip could have been on like there, there was so There's many, a lot of, there was a lot. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So regardless, is, regardless as well though, Angels win. like, yeah, no, regardless angels win, but also regardless about this, I got a comment from somebody named Ricky Bobby. I forgot they're at um, what, what their handle is, but um but they want to talk about the umpires. So uh, umpiring has been horrendously bad. Uh, you didn't watch oh, yes. the game today. The, how um, Jack Mayfield got on was a pitch right down the middle, basically. Like uh, Stassi the night before. Stassi the night before, and then the home run. Yeah, ex- exactly. So we could be talking a completely different, a completely different thing. The Angels could be one in what six, one in five right now, um, because Marsh hits the home run, and obviously they score more. Um, and you never know what what ends up happening. Um, mm-hmm. after Stassi gets on. And then tonight, you know, I, I totally get why Maddenly got tossed last night. I thought he was yeah. going to get tossed again, um, tossed again today. So it's it's been pretty bad, uh, pretty bad umpiring um, all the way around. I don't disagree. It's um, early. It's it is early. It, it takes is early. some time. They, they haven't – it's not like they sit at home and like, oh, let me go and, and Virtual go to another game. And, yeah, like they, they don't have that. Like they get a chance to do it in spring training. And not all of them get chances to be, you know, behind the dish every single night. Like, they might be behind the dish two or three times in the spring because well, they're limited spring training games. You want you want to know the best part about this before we uh, before we preview this next series? Go ahead. Um, it's not Joe West. I know, but but <laughs> but there West. is a really bad clip of Angel Hernandez attempting to be an umpire in the Atlanta Braves game. He missed two calls in the exact same spot on back to back pitches. But we'll move on because, you know, umpires are umpires. I think it, it brings the human element of the game and it makes it fun, you know, because yeah. it's obviously nobody's perfect. Like, this is, this is something fun. we'll talk. This is something we'll talk about, but you do need. And we've said this before. We've even talked to we've even talked to we've talked to a lot of people about it. You have to find a happy median. You know, you, mm-hmm. you got to find something that's going to that's going to work. So um, let's get on to the preview here. We got uh, Otani and Dane Dunny going in game one. Uh, Texas starts the series off. One and four. The Angels are three and three. Shohei Otani was not great on the road last year, uh, but then again, pitching in Texas, that is a pitcher-friendly park. Uh, Angels haven't had a lot of success there. Uh, who do you got winning that game? Oh, we're we're doing this all year. We're gonna we're gonna pick. We're gonna I, predict it. And, and it's gonna be tough because how many innings does Shohei Otani go? If he throws four and a third again, it's going to be a Texas victory because the Angels bullpen is going to be shot. They have thrown so many innings this year, and you know that is going to be what I'm going to say every single episode because this team is on pace to throw 75, to have 75 appearances from everyone. Everyone. You need to see not, Shohei. Not just we, one guy. You need to see Shohei Otani at least get into the fifth, if not later. Six. I want to I want to see he it. Needs six to get innings. into the sixth. Six if inning he to goes win five that. and a third, that's fine. But if he goes four and a third again, Texas wins. I, I'm in agreement there with you. Um, it depends on what Shohei does. So I'll say the Angel. I say Shohei just because it's hard to go against Shohei. Um, Detmers against to be determined in game two. I guess we really can't talk about that. Texas might have only TBDs on this whole thing. Nope. No, nope, um, everyone else. I think that is supposed to be John Gray's start. And John Gray was placed on the IL. Uh, blisters. Two days. Yeah, two days after a start or something like that. So that's probably they're trying to figure out who's going to start that game. But Gotcha. Um, yeah, so that'll be an interesting game as well. I'm intrigued to see what Detmer says. I'm intrigued to see what this whole rotation does when it comes to pitching more innings uh, or pitching more pitches, should I say. I mean, we only saw the uh, Lorenzen got up to 90-something, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but, uh, but yeah, same thing with Detmers. I, I don't think we need to predict that game at all because we got TBD on that one. I, I think I know who Texas is going to start. What do you got? What do you think? I think they start A.J. Alexi. And Texas wins. That guy was lights out for them last year. He was. He was very. He was very good against the Angels as well. Um, he was good gross. against everyone last yeah. year. 
he's, he was gross. He was gross. So moving on to game three here, Syndergaard against Taylor Hearn, I think is who that is, correct? That's correct. Uh, yeah, Taylor Hearn. Taylor Hearn is also gross, but uh, Noah Syndergaard, he's going to he's gonna shove all year. He's going to be he's, he's going to be the uh, – He's going to have Cy Young player of the year. He Yeah, he's going to be the comeback Young player of the year next year, and I think the Angels take this game as well. Um, I agree. I think the Angels take that game. I hope Joe Madden takes the same approach that he did today where he puts Duffy at first base and really goes right-handed with that lineup. Yeah. Maybe Marsh is the only lefty that gets to play, but and Otani, of course. But um, I would love to see them do something – similar where it's Duffy, a Mayfield, a Velasquez, Rendon, and, and yeah. just keep the righties in the lineup because yeah. the lefties have struggled against left-handed pitching so far. Absolutely. Let the kids play um, when it all comes down to it. And then game uh, game four, the getaway game, it's the uh, 1135 uh, game that day. Suarez against Martin Perez. I, of course, I think we got to kind of go against Suarez. I know he pitched well, um, but I, I mean, always go. You need, you need your starters Suarez to go is my new, He's my new Andrew Heaney. You, you, you need to get you need to work your way into the uh, into the sixth inning if you're an Angel starter here this week, and uh, I just don't see Suarez doing that unfortunately in a day game in Texas. I think the ball is going to fly a little bit more even though it's an indoor stadium. Uh, so I think Martin Perez wins that game. Um, Are you sure it's going to be indoors? It could be outdoors. You're they right. have they have the retractable roof. Or, so yeah, that that's my big worry. So I've already talked about this. Angels offense has not scored. They they don't score runs. Texas is putting up runs. That's a little yeah. scary when the Angels haven't really pitched deep into games and they get to the bullpen. If Texas sees this bullpen two or three times in this four-game series, you know, they could see Tepera two times. They could see Archie Bradley two or three times. You know, if they see some of these guys two or three times, it could be a long series for the Angels. But I think Syndergaard gets them into the sixth or seventh and makes it a lot easier on them. Yeah. But it is going to be scary how many runs can Texas score because they scored 12 against the Blue Jays. Everyone has the Blue Jays going to the World Series this year. That is going to be a tough test. Yeah, absolutely. And, and when, it com- when it comes to Shohei Otani, I think he works his way into the seventh. I think he becomes a pitcher. Um, I think he becomes a pitcher this, this time instead of his throwing self that he was in opening day. I think the, I think the uh, energy was – you know, I think he had too much going on there. Um, if we see 92 out of the gate uh, from Shohei Otani that day, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, and then we start seeing him pick it up a little bit more. Um, that's the just where I stand on The issue I have is he's not hitting. Will that affect him mentally on the mound? We saw him resuscitating his, res, resuscitating his bat the other night. Um, is that going to be an issue with him on the mound? Can he separate struggling offensively? and bring it back in pitch well, we'll find out. That's my key to success for Shohei Otani. Can he separate mentally his at-bats from his pitching? Yeah, yeah. I think at the end of the day, uh, that that is definitely what it comes down to. And I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if Joe Madden says, hey, just go out and pitch. Don't worry about hitting this day. Um, I know you want him in the lineup, but a struggling bat, you know, like that, uh, just just worry about pitching today. We'll get, we'll get the hitting down eventually. Um, and again, again, when it comes to Shohei Otani, I think we're all on the same train. I think 45 home runs would be sick, but if he hit 25 home runs and gets 10 wins, I think that's a success, um, successful season. I think that's a uh, pretty damn close to an MVP type season as well. So, um, David Fletcher also went on the IL. They got to throw that out there. Um, Nate, you got any final thoughts moving into, uh, this Texas series? No, just want to continue to see Joe Dell stay right center. Want to see, uh, the angels continue to use the, the back end of the bullpen the way they were supposed to use it. And uh, I, just, I just want to see these pitchers get deep into games, you know, Lorenzo threw the ball well. Um, it's actually been really cool to see the two newcomers, Michael Lorenzo and Noah Syndergaard, throw the ball really, really well. Mm-hmm. Um, Lupe's throwing the ball really well. Obviously, Iglesias throwing the ball well. Um, Archie Bradley's throwing the ball okay. Tapara's had the one hiccup. But, yeah, I think the new kids have been really, really good. The new kids on the block have really started to take over. That could be my new hashtag, new kids on the block. I like that. I like that. I'm going to stick with let the kids play. So, That's guys, cool. as always, I want to thank you so much for listening to this podcast and watching us here at Talking Halos. If you could subscribe wherever you're listening or watching us, uh, pound that bell if you're watching us on YouTube. Uh, go follow us on all of our social medias. You can follow myself on Twitter at Jared underscore Tim's. You can follow Nate at Nate Green 34 Guys, and thank you so much for listening. Have a great rest of your day. <laughs>